Harris for that again goes well with the message, and I don't again I don't normally tell on Wednesday night what I'm preaching on Sunday, but as we were preaching on the book of Acts, uh, it uh, came out. I'll say more about it as we get into the message. Uh, if you're able and willing, if you'll join me in standing in honor of the reading of God's word, we'll just read one verse as a text verse and uh, jump right into the message. And I told the choir as we were coming in that uh, we're going to preach the whole Bible tonight. We're going to start in Genesis. And we're going to preach to the Revelation, and we're still going to get out relatively on time. And so we'll, we'll go through, I'm literally, I'm not even joking, we will we'll go from Genesis to Revelation. We're going to preach on the wonderful words of life. Uh, Acts chapter 5, verse number 20. Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Go stand and speak in the temple all the words to the people, all the words of this life. The, the title is, you can take your pick, I've got two different titles, the words of this life, and that's uh, straight from scripture, or wonderful words of life. Brother uh, Harris chose that song to, to sing as a congregational, I mentioned it on Wednesday night, the words of this life are wonderful Words of life, and I'll explain. Uh, you'll see both in the message uh, this morning as we preach on Jesus Christ, who is our life. And as the song that we just sung, I, I can live because I can face tomorrow. I can live because he lives. Father in heaven, help us, Lord, I pray. As we preach this morning, I, I beg and pre- uh, plead that you'd fill me with your spirit, that you'd use me. Lord, I, I desperately desire to preach the word of God, to preach the words of this life, the life of Jesus Christ, and and uh, the life that He is, uh, the the words of the word of everlasting or eternal life, as as Peter mentioned uh, in another uh, passage in, in John chapter six, and and uh, help us, Lord, I pray to, to preach the word of God. I, I I beg and plead to preach Jesus Christ. There's nothing greater we could preach upon uh, than that of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, I pray to proclaim His name. If there's one that doesn't know Christ. Uh, as their Savior today, I pray that they would uh, receive the, the gift of life, that they would call on the, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, I pray. And those that are saved, Lord, I pray that we'd have a, a greater endeavor, a greater burden, a desire uh, to not just rejoice in those words of life, but to preach, uh, to keep preaching the words of life. As the angel of the Lord came and told these apostles uh, to preach to the people, uh, teach to the people the words of this life. Help us do that, Lord, I pray. I ask uh, earlier in the prayer that you'd fill me with your spirit. I pray you'd fill each hearer with your spirit. Lord, every one of us need to be filled with your spirit uh, uh, from the least to the greatest. If we're saved, uh, we need the filling of your spirit. I pray you'd help us uh, with that and empty ourselves of our, uh, empty our flesh of ourselves and fill uh, us with your spirit. I pray in Jesus Christ's name for his sake. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. The text this morning, as we mentioned, is from a Wednesday night, from our Wednesday night Bible study uh, passage. We are preaching through the book of Acts on Wednesday night, and we're in the book of Acts chapter 5. By the way, let me give you a, a, a plug, uh, maybe more than a plug for Wednesday night church, and, and say this. If you are a believer, if you, you are a, a child of God, you're saved, you know Christ is your Savior, and you want to know your Bible, you want to know the God of the Bible, you want to know the people of the Bible, the truths of the Bible and you're not attending Wednesday night church, you're either not genuine when you say that you want to know the Bible, or you're not serious about knowing the Bible. I just want to give you a plug for Wednesday night. If you want to know the Bible, you want to know the the God of the Bible, the people of the Bible, the truths of the Bible, and and you say, I want to know that. I'm not going to have you raise your hands. Uh, But if you say, I want to know the Word of God, and you're not here on Wednesday nights, or Sunday nights for that matter, then either you're not genuine, you don't really want to know the Bible, or you're not serious about knowing the Bible. If you miss out on Sunday night or Wednesday night, uh, you are depriving your spiritual life of sustenance that will strengthen your walk with the Lord. You will know the Lord better by hearing the Word of God preached on Sundays, Sunday mornings, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So which is it if you're not here? Which is it? Are you comfortable with your level level of knowledge of God? Are you, Or are you... Uh, not serious about your spiritual life. You say, Pastor, that's kind of harsh. I, I, I don't say this often, 
Uh, but it's true. If you want to know the God of this Bible, if you know, want to know the Bible, if you want to know the, the people of this Bible, Wednesday nights we spend a lot of time talking about the people of the Bible, teaching what the Bible says. If you want to know the Bible and you say, well, I have just skip out on Wednesday night, I wonder if you're not genuine at all when you say you want to know the Bible or you're not serious about knowing the Bible. And I know people work, and I certainly understand that sometimes you have to work, but many could be here and could hear the Word of God preached more often and choose not to, and I want to encourage you to do so. It doesn't, by the way, it doesn't offend me or affect me personally. You're not rejecting me when you don't want to hear about the Word of God. It's not me that you don't want to hear about. It's the Lord God Almighty, and I, I would take every opportunity that I could to hear the Word of God preached. So anyway, our passage from Wednesday night, that was the plug for Wednesday night. I had it in my notes. I wasn't even off the cuff. I, I just wanted to make sure I put a plug in for Wednesday night. And, and if you want to hear the Word of God preached, you'll be here on Wednesday night, and I know you will. So tonight, or this morning, uh, I, uh, we were preaching through the book of Acts, and we're in the book of Acts chapter 5, and, and, and just a quick summary of where we are in Acts chapter 5, we find the apostles filled with the power of the Spirit of God. Oh, how, what power they had. And they've already been arrested once, they've already been threatened once, and they said, don't preach the Word of God, and, and yet they begged for the power of God to be bold in their witness, and so they began to, to preach the Word of God, and not only that, but they began to have signs and wonders, and, and, and that was exclusive to the apostles, and, and, and they were healing people and casting out unclean uh, 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 spirits and to the place that people were wanting to bring their sick just so the shadow of Peter would pass over them and that they might be healed. What an amazing power that they had received by the power of the Holy Ghost. They were preaching the Word of God. They were going everywhere. And they were preaching Jesus Christ. They were going to the temple. Peter and John went into the temple, and there was the, the lame man. And, and they, they said, by the power of Jesus Christ, arise up and walk. And so he rose up and walked, and he was leaping and praising God. And he's in the temple uh, preaching Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and the, the, the high priest and the, the Pharisees, they wanted nothing to do with that. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, these leaders, the, the Jewish religious leaders of the day, had uh, uh, bound them or put them in, in hold for a night. Then they took them out and they did not kill them. They threatened them. And, and then they were continued to preach. And so they were arrested again and put in prison. And while they're in prison, the angel of the Lord comes. The angel of the Lord comes in this passage in chapter 5. And look what it says in uh, uh, verse number uh, let's go back to verse number uh, 17. Then the high priest rose up. I'm sorry, verse number, uh, um, I'm in the wrong chapter. No, I'm in the right place. Um, uh, verse number 17. Uh, uh, then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. And that's, we'll say more about that in a moment. That's important to know that the high priest was of the sect of the group of the Sadducees and were filled with indignation. That was the thought that we preached on on Wednesday night, the indignation. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Wednesday night we said, uh, if you've ever heard of a prison break, you know that the furthest they can get from the prison is where they're going. Uh, but not these men. No, the angel of the Lord uh, breaks them out of prison and he says, go to the temple. That's the place where the, the high priest and the captain of the temple is. They were the ones that arrested them and put them in prison. And, and, and so he said, go back, go to the temple, go to the people and preach all the words of this life. What an amazing message. On Wednesday, I wanted to include a point about the words of this life, but it was going to take more uh, going to take over the message so I decided to preach a, a separate message this morning what are the words of this life notice what it says go and stand and speak in the temple to the, all the people all the words of this life whose life Acts chapter 4 let's go back and we can look at a couple verses uh, if you've been here on Wednesday night you know and I just want to kind of cover a couple verses Acts chapter 4, uh, they, they had arrested them and they had said, uh, verse 17 says, but it spread no further, uh, uh, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly, talking about the, the council, the high priest, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. The name is Jesus Christ. 
And that they arrested him, that they threatened him, and they said, all right, because they were afraid of the people, they did not kill them, do anything else to them. At that point, later on, they arrested him and beat them. Uh, um, uh, but they, they, they threatened them and say, all right, leave. And verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, whose life is being referred to when in Acts chapter 5 and verse number 20, it says, go stand and speak in the temple to all the people, all the words of this life. Whose life is this life? It's Jesus Christ. They were preaching the life of Jesus Christ and the Jewish religious leaders were demanding of them and threatening them not to preach this life. What are the words of life? Take your Bibles and go to the John chapter 6. We'll come back to Acts eventually, but we're going to look around the Bible this morning. What are the words of this life? Whose life are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus Christ. And what are the words of this life? What words uh, uh, that are they supposed to be preaching? Look what it says in John chapter 6, verse number, let's begin in 64, towards the end of the chapter. But there are some of you that believe not Jesus is uh, 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 talking and, and says, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that betrayed, believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Jesus speaking, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, uh, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the 12, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the, what's that? Living God. Wonderful words of Christ. Peter said, now you have the words of eternal life. We're sure you're the son of the living God. The God that we worship is a God that is alive, a living God. Now, this uh, is not in my notes, and, and uh, I don't want to go too far and st- uh, uh, chase this rabbit down too far, but this is October 1st, and 30 days, there'll be a, a, a celebration, a, a worldly celebration. I, I really uh, hope that you're not a part of the end, the last day. This is the first day of the month, the last day of this month. Uh, uh, our world will celebrate something that is marked, is characterized by three things. Uh, witchcraft, the occult, darkness, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And listen, death. It's a celebration of death. It, this time of year is always uh, uh, frustrating to me because everywhere you go you see a, a skeleton. What's a skeleton a picture of? Death. And a ghost. What's a, a ghost a picture of? Death, and you'll see, you'll see uh, little uh, uh, headstones that says R.I.P. Rest in peace on them. And what are those? Are a picture of? It's as if our world is celebrating death. But I'm so thankful that I worship the God of everlasting life. A Christian has no business celebrating death. We worship the God of life. The life that there that we're preaching is the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus is the bread of life in John chapter 6. He's the light of life in John chapter 8. He's the the life in John chapter 14. The the way, the truth, and the life in John chapter 14. He's the prince of life in Acts chapter 3. He's the word of life in 1 John 1. 1. With Jesus is the fountain of life, Psalm 36. The way of life in Proverbs 6. The spirit of life in Romans 8. The crown of life in James 1. The grace of life in 1 Peter 3. The tree of life in both Genesis 2 and Revelation. To. He's the water of life. He has, he has the water of life. He has the Lamb's book of life in Revelation 21. I'm telling you, He is the God of life. Amen. Wonderful words of life. The angel of the Lord wakes these or gets these apostles out of prison. He says, here's what I want you to do under the threat of death. Because the, the, the high priest 
and the captain of the, te- the, the, the temple, they wanted to put them to death. We read that. If you, if you were here on Wednesday night, you know Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, several times they wanted to put them to death, but they, they wouldn't because they were afraid of the people. And he, under the threat of death, he said, go preach the words of this life. Go preach the words of eternal life, Jesus Christ. So let me take the word of God this morning. And I have four or five points. Let me just tell you about the God of life. Can I do that this morning? Just, let me just talk about the God of life. First of all, let me say this. He is the giver of life. And Genesis chapter 2, we would read, you don't have to turn there, you could, but actually Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, says the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You know, in the five previous days and earlier in day six, uh, he, how did he create the heaven and the earth? How did he create light? How did he create uh, 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 the firmament? How did he divide the light from the darkness? How did he divide the land from the sea? How did he create the, the, the fish of the, the water and the fowls of the air? How did he create the, the beasts and the, the creatures that crawl? How did he, by his word, but with his hand, He formed man in the dirt. And then he leaned down and he (laughs) breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of man. You have life because God gave it to you. He put Adam to sleep and and he took a rib and and he uh, formed woman and he gave her life. And her name was Eve, the mother of all. She was uh, uh, her daughters uh, and her, their daughters and their daughters and their daughters and their daughters and their daughters was your mother and she gave you life. It came directly from God. The, the life that you have is a gift of God. And so often one of the reasons that the world is celebrating death and celebrating darkness is because they don't want to celebrate the life that God's given them. They're not worried about Uh, expelling a life in the womb. They're not worried about uh, uh, taking the life of someone. That life is not precious to those that don't believe in God, who don't want to worship God, who don't want to see God as, as high and lifted up, the most high God like we preached last Sunday. They don't want to worship Him. And so what they do is they devalue what He created. And can I tell you that what we have is wonderful and precious. We have life. It came from God. He's the giver of life. They still don't know exactly how life began if, you didn't, if they deny God. You get into, the stu- into a deep study, and there's these, uh, this little particle, they call it the God particle, because they don't know where it comes from. They don't know how life can, they just had to have to give it some, uh, 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 something that they don't understand. It has to come from somewhere. When life begins, God is the giver of life. And can I tell you that the reason we were talking about this in, in, in school, I'm I, uh, teaching a Bible class, and I'm enjoying that. It's a, a little extra work uh, throughout the week, but I'm teaching Bible class in high school, and one of the things we talked about in the last couple of weeks was one of the reasons that people deny God, the existence of God. The reason we have to come up with something like evolution uh, is because we don't want to realize or, uh, or accept the fact that what we have belongs to him. What? Know you not that you're not your own? We are of God twice. If you're a child of God, not only does your life belong, that, you, that he gave you your life, but then he gave you, and we'll talk about this later on, eternal life. You're bought with a price. And the world does not want to Uh, acknowledge the idea, the thought, the fact, the truth that after we're dead, uh, as there's a point of a man wants to die and after this the judgment will stand before an almighty God and he's going to say, what did you do with the life that I gave you? I've given you life. He is the giver of life in Genesis, way back in the book of Genesis. And on and on and on and on. You have life. I have life. Because God gave us life. He's the giver of life. Then let me, number two, let me talk about this, the, the time of life. In uh, Genesis 18, there's uh, the time of life. That phrase is used two different times in Scripture. I think it's like four different actual times, but two different scenarios. 
One is with uh, uh, Sarah and uh, in Genesis chapter 18. And God promises Abram, he, he promises uh, uh, Abraham a son. Pro- well, he promised Abram a son. And, and of course, uh, we know that Ishmael was not the son, that, uh, the son of promise. He, he promised uh, him a son that Isaac was the son that, that God had promised. And he promised uh, uh, Isaac through Sarah. And so in Genesis 18, 14, uh, Sarah in the book of Genesis laughed. Oh, I, am, could I have a child? I'm too old to have a child. Genesis 18, 14 says this, Is there anything too hard for the, for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. There will be a time when life begins. Second Kings chapter 4, it's a similar story. Uh, uh, God is promising through Elisha. Uh, he is promising a son. And Gehazi and uh, Elisha are very thankful for the, 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 the man and the woman who have built a, a prophet's chamber for Elisha. And Elisha says, what do we do for this woman? And Gehazi says, well, Elisha, she doesn't have a child. She hasn't had a child. And, 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 and Elisha says, Gehazi should have noticed that. Of course. And so he promises a child to this woman. And in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 17, and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. You have a time of life. But just as every life does, it has an end. Just like any other time, the, the clock starts. At some point, the clock will stop. It started. It will stop. I, every one of us is different. I have a different birthday, and, and we celebrate birthdays here at Lafayette uh, Bible Baptist Church on Sunday night. So those that are born in the week. In fact, we have a, by the way, be ready tonight. We have a, bu- a bucket birthday tonight. Looking forward to that. And so uh, if you don't know what that is, come on Sunday night. You'll find out what a bucket birthday is. It doesn't mean somebody's kicking the bucket. Uh, <laughs> They get to have the bucket. <laughs> and so have a bucket birthday tonight. And uh, uh, um, uh, you have a birthday. But can I tell you that you have a death date. As long as the Lord tarries his coming, and he doesn't return as Brother Abraham prayed, even so, Lord, come quickly. Uh, there's a death date. We were, this has been many years. It's probably been 15, 16 years ago, maybe, maybe a little bit longer than that. I remember visiting uh, my wife's grandparents and, um, out in West Texas. And uh, both are still alive and doing very well. And, and uh, uh, they said, let's go out and look at our grave sites, grave plots. I said, oh, okay, that doesn't sound very encouraging to me. I don't want to. And there they were, their plots and their headstones. You remember that? Had their name and their dates of birth, not the dates of death. <laughs> and I'm thinking, that's a little morbid here. But, but as they're older folks, some people, they, they plan ahead, and they had planned ahead. And, but their death dates are empty. Can I tell you, in heaven, your death dates are already nailed down. God knows. We have a time of life. We have a beginning. And if the Lord tarries is coming, we'll all have an end. Where the clock starts, that hourglass turns over, but for each one of us, that last grain of sand will one day, the Lord tarries his coming, will drop to that bottom half. Well, all of our lives will end. Why is that? Well, because there is a taker of life. There's a taker of life. There's an enemy of life. The enemy of life is Satan, the devil. But can I tell you, the taker of life is not Satan. The taker of life is sin. Sin is the taker of life. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the free, uh, fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Death is the end of life. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Did Anybody seen Adam and Eve lately? 
Anybody ever seen, anybody seen Eve, met Eve lately? No, I, Eve died. God, God kept his word. It wasn't immediately. And, and, and Satan, uh, he certainly knows how to, uh, uh, to sell a bill of goods. But Eve died. God kept his word. Ye shall not surely die, uh, said Satan. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall, eat as, no, ye shall, be, uh, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. We know that Adam and Eve took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and as a result, they died. Look over in the book of Romans, if you will. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse number 12. And I, I really wish we could take time to re- preach this whole chapter. We don't, we don't have time to do that. Let's look at verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. That's Adam. Sin entered into the world by one man, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. The reason that you die, the reason that I will one day die, the reason that there is not only a birth date, but a death date written down in heaven, is because I'm a sinner, and you're a sinner. God gave Adam and Eve the, the, uh, uh, the breath of life, gave Adam the breath of life, and, and, and gave Eve life, and they have been giving life, uh, 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 continuing, uh, uh, God's life has continued even to this day where you have life and I have life. But not only uh, did God give them life, but they themselves, Adam and Eve, chose to sin, and as a result of their sin, death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Not only do you have life, that came uh, through Adam and Eve, but you have death that came by the choice of Adam and Eve. Verse 13, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, uh, who is the figure of him that was to come. He said, we don't know about the, the, the price of sin. We don't know about sin until the law. But even until Moses, everybody died because they were all had a sin nature. But not as the offense, verse 15, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, Christ hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one man, by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Verse 17, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Verse number 18, therefore... As by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, death, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life. We have not only the, 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 the taker of life, uh, uh, the giver of life and the time of life, the taker of life, but we see here the continuation of life. Because you've sinned, you deserve to die and go to hell. Eternal death, and we'll say more about that here in a few minutes. But can I tell you that you can have life abundantly? abundantly? What I'm saying is, uh, uh, Jacob, after we die, I can still have life. And that's what... When, when the, the apostles were preaching, what they were preaching, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. They did not believe in eternal life. And, and as we, we'll say more about this on Wednesday nights, uh, but as the, the high priest was a, a Sadducee, he did not believe in the resurrection. He did not believe that men uh, uh, could be resurrected. He did not believe that Jesus could be resurrected. And here are the disciples, the apostles, they're going around, they're preaching, hey, Jesus Christ lives, and because he lives, because he lives, I can live. I can have eternal life. And they were preaching this, and, and the, the, the high priest said, no, you can't preach this, and put him in prison. And the, the angel of the Lord let him out of prison. And he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to preach the words of this life. 
the life of Jesus Christ, not only because he was still alive, but because that you can still live. Oh, I'm so thankful for the continuation of life. John chapter 5, verse 24 says, Verily, verily, Jesus is speaking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, life that doesn't end, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Jesus taught those exact words. Jesus taught them in John chapter 6, these very apostles. He taught them, and this is the will of him that sent me. Jesus Christ speaking. In your Bible, if you have a red letter edition, these will be red words. John 6, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, Jesus Christ, and believeth on him may have everlasting. I'm talking about life that lasts forever, that does not end. Everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus had taken the time to teach the apostles about everlasting life. And then he was taken. And they scratched their head and they said, how is this true? And then he rose from the grave three days later. And he saw them in the upper room. And then he ascended to heaven. He said, go and preach. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Go preach. And so they did. They began to preach that Jesus Christ rose from the grave, and as a result, so can you. And that caused, here's the key to Wednesday night, indignation. You can't preach that. You can't preach everlasting life. Now, that's the problem. You can't preach everlasting life. But can I tell you that Jesus Christ rose from the grave, and because he did, so can you. Those are the words of life. Uh, uh, I think of the, the chorus, sing them over again to me. The, the verse, wonderful words of life. I didn't know that you were going to pick this song. I was going to use this song in the message. Let me more of their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Oh, they're beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Verse 2. Christ the blessed one gives to all. Wonderful words of life. Sinner, list to his loving call. Wonderful words of life. Christian, sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Aren't you thankful for the wonderful words of life? Finally, let me say this. There's an end of life. Oh, not eternal life, but to life in this world, there's an end of, really, death. Revelation chapter 20. I told you I'd start in Genesis 2. We'll get to Revelation 20. I saw, verse 11, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, all those that had died, now, if I believe in Jesus Christ, am I part of the dead? No, I'm part of the, I'm part of the eternal life. I'm part of the living. I'm not a part of the... Who's a part of the dead? Well, those, according to John chapter 6, we read uh, um, John chapter 6, it says, This is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him at the last day. John chapter 5, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I, I, I believed on the name of the Son of God. I believed on Jesus Christ. I believe on him that sent him, Jesus Christ. I, I, I will not have condemnation. I'll be passed from death into life. If you believed in Jesus Christ, you don't have condemnation. You've passed from death into life. But if you believe not, John chapter 3, 
Verse number 18. You already have condemnation. These dead here in Revelation chapter 20 are the ones who have not believed on Jesus Christ. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The books were open, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Can I tell you that if you don't trust the son of life from the giver of life, then we'll have everlasting death in the lake of fire. Jesus Christ, I saw something the other day that they said Jesus Christ uh, they were, is the most important man in history. Well, if there ever was an understatement, that, was, that is it. There's no one more important than Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, though he was all man, he was not just man, he's all God. And as such, he has the ability to give you and I everlasting life. If we would just call on his name, just as it says in John chapter 5, we believe and call on his name. We'll not have condemnation. We, pass, we'll, we will be passed from death into life. But if we do not, we'll have everlasting death in the lake of fire. Pastor, what do we do with the words of life? What do we do with these words? Well, if you haven't accepted Christ, if you haven't believed that Jesus Christ is the life, then that's number one. Call on the Lord for everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you don't know Christ today, call on Him. Don't stand at the great white throne judgment. Don't, don't stand there. Don't be in that position where the dead and the small and great will stand, be standing before the judge. Be in the position that there will be no condemnation, that you'll be passed from death unto life. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior today. Say, Pastor, I've already done that. I, I did that uh, 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 last year. I did that five years ago. I did that 30 years ago, Pastor. Well, let's go back to Acts chapter 5. And if you were here Wednesday, you remember what we're to do. Verse 20, go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. So, Pastor, I've accepted Jesus Christ. I have eternal life. I'm, I don't have condemnation. I've passed from death into life. I have eternal life. Well, believer, who have you told this last week about the words of this life? Who have you given the... We have something that is so great. It's so powerful. Jesus Christ gave us the words of his life, the word of God. We could go back through and talk about all the different things of life that Jesus represents, but in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, the same as in the beginning with God, and the word became flesh. This is Jesus Christ, the word of life. 1 John 1, 1 says, in fact, let's just turn, 1 John, real quick, 1 John 1, verse number 1 says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. I, I know that I haven't, I haven't handled the, the, the word of life, Jesus Christ, in the same way that, that John the Beloved did, as he leaned on the breast of Jesus Christ at the, the Last Supper. But can I tell you that my hands have handled the word of life? You have something so powerful and so great in your lap. Have you shared it this week? Say, Pastor, what should we do with it? Well, I'm just going to tell you what the angel of the Lord told the apostles. Go tell the people of the words of this life. Tell somebody about 
Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father in heaven, oh, thank you, Lord, for the words of this life. Thank you for the life of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the life that we have, you've given us. But then also thank you for the life of Jesus Christ. Thank you for eternal life, everlasting life, that when we call on the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we can have. Lord, that there will be many at the end of this month that will celebrate the opposite. They will celebrate death and darkness, witchcraft. Many, many, many will do that not even realizing that they're rejecting you. Many, many people across this, our country and the world will do that under the auspice of saying, well, I'm a Christian and I can do this, and they don't know you. They've not, they've not called on your son, Jesus Christ. Maybe there's one in here this morning that has not accepted Christ as their Savior. Maybe they'd say, I'd never turn to witchcraft. I would never worship darkness and death, but if we die without Christ, we'll be in eternal darkness, eternal death with Satan himself. Lord, I pray if there's one that doesn't know Christ as their Savior today, that today will be the day they call upon the Lord. And those that do, Lord, will endeavor to preach the Word of God to friend and, and, and stranger alike that will preach the Word of God as your apostles did, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, without 